Hello everyone, I'm Apoorva Pandita and welcome to Live Law. When conducting research, we frequently encounter both orders and judgments within the legal context. Although they might seem similar, they hold distinct meanings and implications. It's crucial to recognize the differences between these terms as they play a significant role in legal research. For law students, there's another aspect that can be sometimes confusing. The legal terms ratio decidendi and obiter dictum. These terms carry specific meanings. Ratio decidendi, Latin, for the reason for deciding. That is the legal principle or rule of law that the court relied upon to reach its decision in a case. An obiter dictum, that is Latin for other things said, refers to statements or observations made by the court that are not strictly necessary to the decision in the case. Well, recently the Supreme Court has itself explained as to when does an order become a binding precedent. But before we get into that, let's quickly understand what exactly are precedents. The law of precedent in India, also known as the doctrine of judicial precedent, refers to the practice of following previous legal decisions when deciding current cases. Well, in India, the Supreme Court's decisions have the highest binding authority followed by high courts within their respective jurisdictions. Generally, lower courts are bound by the decisions of higher courts within their hierarchy. But when exactly does an order become a binding precedent? Relying on the recent observation made by the Supreme Court, as it has answered the question itself, the Supreme Court pointed out that its brief orders, which are only meant to close specific cases and settle disputes, cannot be used as examples for future cases. Justices B. V. Nagaratna and P. K. Mishra mentioned this while addressing an issue in a group of appeals. The issue was whether the judgment in Bangalore Club versus Commissioner of Income Tax 2013 needed to be rethought because of an earlier order in Commissioner of Income Tax versus Kanpur Club Limited because of which the court highlighted several key points about the concept of binding legal decisions. Let us go through the points highlighted by the top court itself. First one being the binding ratio. Well, what's binding under Article 141 of the Constitution is the core reason behind a judgment's conclusion. This reason is known as the ratio decidendi. Understanding the reasoning, the reasoning behind a judgment can only be understood by reading the whole judgment. The core principle of a case, that is the ratio, must be extracted from the facts and laws involved in that specific case. Limited value of disposal orders. Well, orders that are meant to be just resolved a case does not hold the same weight as binding precedents. Talking about obiter dictum. The additional remarks made in a judgment are persuasive but not binding on the court itself. Specific decisions. A decision only serves as a legal example for what it explicitly decides, not for what can be inferred. Detailed judgment. A Supreme Court order without a comprehensive explanation lacks the same precedential value because important issues might not have been conclusively discussed. Clear declaration of law. A Supreme Court order carries legal weight only when it has well-explained decision, not a simple dismissal. Binding versus Precedential An order is binding on the involved parties but might not set a precedent for later cases. Order Purpose Brief orders serve to close a specific case but might not serve as a precedent for later cases. Well, after this observation made by the court, the court noted that the judgment in Kanpur Club lacks reasoning or analysis. As a result, it has a weak precedential value. The absence of a clear ratio decidendi suggests it's not broadly applicable. With this, we've come to the end of this video. We really hope that you like our content. And if you do, then do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Now, you can also become a member by donating Rs. 89 per month. Thank you.